Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 49. Probably. It could be 48. It's the only new music review show, and I mean new, hosted by a French professor immediately after getting off the elliptical at the YMCA. Now, I say new music because that's the whole point of the show. I'm trying to figure out like what's out there, what's really good. I'm trying to like have faith that even though I'm getting older, that the human artistic output is not going down. And my discovery is, of course it's not. You just have to look and you have to find the new music that's interesting and out there. Now, if, you watch, if you're watching all my episodes in order, you'll know that the last one I did is this mixtape concept. You know, I made this mixtape, the, the best of 2018. And I put it on a cassette, you know, like a, an actual physical cassette to make it seem like kind of cool and hip. And my whole point was that this old medium was a lot better than playlists because you had to discern what was good and you had to limit it. Whereas playlists are unlimited, they can be hours long, 45 minutes you have to work with. That's good and fine and that's a neat idea. But to a certain extent, that's against what I'm trying to do. I'm actually trying to figure out what are the new forms of music? What is the new way that music is going to be distributed and understood? So for my next episode, it was going to be the artist of the year. And that was where I was going to fill the other half of the cassette, the other half of the mixtape. And I'm still going to do that. I'll be releasing that tomorrow probably, or, or maybe on the, on the first of the year. But I didn't want to do them back to back, looking backwards, cassette. I wanted to do something in between that was completely now, completely radical, completely new. So for that, I'm going to be reviewing someone named Eric Taxon and his album, Little Spoon. Now, there's no production value on my show except for this. Professor Payne's pretentious preface. And I want to talk a little, bit about, a little bit about this album and how I discovered it. You see, I only review things that are less than a week old, okay? So I was, I was going through my favorite streaming service, Tidal, and I was trying to find the new music. And I don't know, it's the end of the year, I don't know why, but there's like none. There's like two albums and neither of them are any good. And I don't review anything I know I'm not gonna like. So I was just like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna find new music? I downloaded Spotify, same problem. But then I used my Professor Payne big brain thinking, and I thought, well, why don't I go to Bandcamp? I mean, that's, I think, where all the new music is really hiding. If we're looking at it honestly, the future of music is probably on Bandcamp. You don't have to have publishing. You don't have to worry about copyrights. You just release music. It's the freest place I believe there's ever been for artists to find an audience. So good. So I go on Bandcamp and I'm just clicking around and I'm looking to see anything that I would be interested in. And boom, right there is the name Eric Taxon. Now, the reason that I do this show sort of secondhandedly uh, is this relationship that I have with my ex-girlfriend's kid who's a super rad kid who like loves YouTube and vintage video games. And like, he's been teaching me about YouTube over the last couple years, you know, we maintained a friendship. And, and like, I started to understand that like, there's all this stuff going on, you know, like, like, like political discourse on TV, forget it. MSNBC, Fox, forget it. None of it's any good. None of it's interesting. That's not where the real stuff is happening. If you want to find the really vital, interesting leftist philosophy and thought, it's all on YouTube. And to another extent, I think you could say a lot of the music is either on YouTube or on Bandcamp. This whole space where you don't really need any entry. You don't need any permission. So Eric Taxon, he's somehow related to the leftist like YouTube world. If you know, please post that in the responses. What is his relationship to it? I, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of leftist theme on this album, but not a ton. So I knew his name. And so I thought, all right, listen, I've heard this guy talk about Eric Taxon, all this, so I'll just listen to it. And I was astounded to see this guy has released like 10 albums in the last year. And here's my pretentious preface. Maybe if music keeps going in this direction, the amount that people are releasing music is going to go up because it's going to be matching the way people consume YouTube and TV that's all about content, consistent content. And that this guy, Eric Taxon, is not making perfect albums. And this is not a perfect album, it's good, we'll get to it. He's not releasing perfect little gems, but he's releasing consistently high quality, interesting music 
at rapid intervals. And that's going to create the same kind of audience for his music that a YouTuber would get for his talks. So, I don't know, that's my pretentious preface. Maybe that's where music is going. Now let's talk about the album itself, Eric Taxon. As I sometimes do, I wanna take one track and use that as the, the, the through line on the entire album. Uh, that track, the exemplary song, and it gets Sky's stamp, is called Pack My Box. Or it might be called Packing Boxes. Something to do with box and packing. The basis of this song is an insanely annoying beep. Beep, 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 beep. The whole time. It's really aggravating. And this guy likes to aggravate you. He really likes to make music that makes you go, geez, all right, I, I get it. Yeah, that was kind of, oh, you're still going. Oh, you're gonna keep the beeping. And then the lyrics themselves are, are these kind of funny, somewhat sarcastic, somewhat ironic, somewhat genuine lyrics. I'd say that's his, his lyrical output is all in that zone where he's not pure irony, but at the same time, he doesn't seem completely comfortable expressing himself honestly without some level of irony. So this is a song that's about like feeling uncomfortable, I believe, with the state of the world. Uh, he has an awesome line. I dreamt all the old men in power died, and for once I felt that everything would be all right. So kind of fun, sort of, I don't know, anarchist, angry at the world, kind of punk thematic, right? I, I think this is very much like punk music. Um, it's not punk music in the way like hard guitars or anything, but punk music, you know, is, it's music, if it's not by these people, it's at least for like the youth in the dominant parts of society who are disaffected and frustrated and uncomfortable with their privilege and uncomfortable with the older generations and the way they've been treated. I feel like that's you know where punk music goes. And this feels very much like modern 21st century punk music, even though there's no guitars, really, only in one song is there a guitar, and no drums at all, as far as I can tell. But actually, it's, it's this sort of aggravating thing that's bugging you and trying to say that all oh, the old men are dead and that's how we'd be happy. And it's got that kind of youthful, naive, perhaps, punk aesthetic. Even though the whole song basically sounds like an annoying video game soundtrack. And that's another element to this whole album is it's got this beep, 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 which is annoying. But then it's built up with this great rhythm like that comes in with other synthesizers and ends up being a really well textured synthesized song. And then keeps on adding elements in there. And then there's like a lead synthesizer line that sounds exactly like a video game from the 1980s. But like a lot of this album, like a lot of this music, it used to be that saying something sounded like a video game was the biggest insult you could lob at something. In this case, it's not, it's not the case. Um, I'll take you through the rest of the album. Uh, the first track is beautifully titled. Um, it's, it's something like, uh, I've been living with other people's nostalgia my whole life. I think that's great. It's a, it's a discordant song. That's another great track. Um, he has these great little quotes that he puts in there. Uh, which I think are really great for like repeatability, like random quotes from nowhere, and like you get them stuck in your head and you want to say them all the time. Uh, in this song, it was, I mean, it's fun and all, but what happens when Ron Weasley spins you too fast? I don't know what any of that means. Um, also, this is a great theme, and I think if we're talking about what modern punk music would be, I think the youth being mad at nostalgia is a good source of that. Like, I actually feel bad for young people that they have to like. I mean, I love Star Wars. It's like my favorite thing in the whole world. But now that's like what young people have to live with and Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and, and the Smurfs. It's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, that, that we loved our childhood so much and that you have to live with it. And I'm sorry that those bastards figured out a way to sell to us while also selling to our kids. It's kind of rotten. I just have to hope that like, you know, Minecraft and... SpongeBob and Undertale are enough <laughs> to keep you going as far as things that are yours and not mine. But as a Gen Xer, I feel like I basically have everything. I had it the first time and now I have it back again. So any song that goes against that kind of nostalgia is great. And it's kind of mixed in with this whole general vaguely anti-capitalist theme. Uh, the next song is called Kissing Ancaps, uh, which is something about private property, ancaps meaning anarcho-car 
anarcho-capitalists. Uh, it's this sort of like weird song, sort of like, you know, Republicans in love, that kind of theme. Um, but then out of nowhere, there's like a beautiful saxophone. And it's like a real saxophone. It's not a synthesizer. So I don't know what he's doing here. He has this whole album that feels like he made it in 45 minutes on a computer. And all tick do tick do 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 And then a full saxophone. Now, in another song later, uh, there's like a cello. In the song Honest, a cello comes out of nowhere. So he's doing interesting things. And I hope that he keeps working in with this kind of weird dynamic. And I'll have to go back and listen to some of his other stuff. Uh, if you're an Eric Taxon fan, let me know what I should listen to in the comments. Subscribe. I'm a YouTuber. Okay. Um, the singing in general is kind of, if, you know, speaking of Xers, it's kind of like Mountain Goatsy, but it's also very Bo Burnham-y. Like, you know, Bo Burnham is the comedian and he's the voice of the youth and he's able to comment on things in that super smart way that's personal but also universal. Um, he's very similar in that way. Uh, there's a couple instrumental tracks, uh, a song called Film. It's got this rough rumbling bass, kind of video gamey as well, but actually uh, quite enjoyable. Um, a very mournful song called Winter Was Warm, which has this sort of like weird old Christmas song. I don't really know what it is sampled in there. Um, there's like a, a, a sex song called Dead Inside. It's sort of like a, hey, the whole world's ending, so let's do it, I think. I don't, I don't really know. Um, it's got the nice line, uh, the water is getting warmer, so might as well swim. I think that's a nice kind of despairing nihilistic view on global warming. And then interestingly, there's this track called Monster. And I don't know, is this the most interesting song on the album or the least interesting? It's the most straightforward song on, on this, on the whole record. It's just a guitar and it's like a love song. And it's not clear, is it a love song to a man who's really hairy? I don't know. I mean, I only listened to it once. I get the sense if I listened to this album a bunch of times, I would get a lot more out of it. But it's like this like nice love song with a guitar. And I can't tell if the fact it's so straightforward makes it better or worse. Like, I can't tell what Eric Taxon is doing. Is he going to keep doing this? Where it's like super ironic and then super earnest? I can't tell. But in any event, I'm happy to have listened to it. This feels like this is where music is going. It's made in someone's room. It's put out rapidly. It's put out with no filters. It's put out with no approval. Uh, and it has a certain vibrance and life to it. And I think if you really are out there and you're trying to figure out like, what is the sound of like the cool kids? Like what are the cool kids who are in high school? What are they listening to now? Go on Bandcamp and download Eric Taxon's Little Spoon, or I presume any of his other 17 albums he released this year. Uh, my three word uh, review <sighs> would be, hmm, revolutionary video game music? We'll see if I stick with that one. Hey, suggest a different three letter Three word one, and then I'm going to stop asking for comments. I'm not going to do any more calls to action. All right, so uh, look forward to the artist of the year 2018. Spoiler, I always think the same artist is the artist of the year. Uh, and check out that tomorrow. Isn't that right? Smurf. This is from uh, uh, Macy's Holiday 2010. This was the gift my dad gave to my daughter for Christmas. Uh, I don't think she noticed that it was a re-gift. Okay, bye. Oh, there's the camera.